All right, my beautiful friends. It's time to talk. Uh, big time. All right, so uh, here we go. This is my post-market wrap-up on this Monday, August 12, 2019. Wow, wow, and freaking epic. Um... All right, let, let's talk about let's talk about the stock market first cuz you know you're supposed to look here, look here, don't look here. All right. Stocks took a hit today. Dow Jones Industrial Average dropped about 400 points. Okay. Again, oh, so what? Really? Uh yeah, stocks are down. It it's not that significant just yet, but the bond market people and I mean like freaking holy wow. It's the truth. We saw t moves today in the bond market almost as dramatic as you would see in an equity um, or, or a stock. Bonds usually don't, they're not as volatile uh, for good reason. I mean, you know, these are supposed to be safe havens, a stable source of income, investing in debt. You've got to be high, but that's a whole other thing. Right now, as I am doing this video blog, the 30-year is yielding 2.13. The federal funds rate, the overnight rate, is 2.25. Okay, so full spectrum inversion there. Now, number two, at one point today, the spread between the two and the 10 was five. Uh, it was eight when I did my video this morning. That's a dramatic move. Now, I don't know. How many of you out here are paying attention to the financial channels? But I did hear CNBC addressing the issue of a 2 to 10 inversion. Of course, they had to parade someone out and uh, have them explain to you that, you know, well, it's not really so bad. You know, they have to cushion the impact. But let me explain this to you. Why is a 2 to 10 inversion so important? Because it's never been wrong. Never been wrong. It has predicted every recession, every market crash, every meltdown and depression. It's never been wrong. So this is going to get attention. Once this inversion occurs, and again, we are, we're there right now. This is imminent. Uh, another move like today, we could drop tomorrow, the next day. Um, seriously, if the bond market continues, it's panic. Because that's what we're seeing here. This is panic in the debt market. When you see this kind of action, it seems to, a lot of times it feeds on itself. So if this continues, a 2 to 10 inversion could happen at, at any time. Um, do you know how many people <laughs> wanted to bet me over the years that this would never happen? How about this? Uh, we all know the yield curve is inverted. I, I had so many people, again, even just with that. Uh, we have a full spectrum inversion. Wanted to bet me that it wouldn't happen. So many, so many so-called professionals out here who know more than I do, who believe they know more than I do. Uh, it's pretty hard. Let me explain that very clearly because that's all I do. I study these markets constantly around the clock. Um, there, I am more than certain there is other people that study the markets like me, and uh, I would have to say it takes a lot to have that kind of level of dedication. Um, but this is the only reason why I'm able to come up with these things years before they happen. It's just so easy. I was talking to Greg Hunter earlier today. I was like, Greg, this is just so simple. It's a mathematical equation. Uh, and we're talking basic math. That's what we have. Let me put another perspective on what's happening around us. So we understand that we are being told that our economy is as strong as it's ever been. We are booming. Meanwhile, store closures at record highs, uh, consumer debt, all-time record highs, household debt, all-time record highs. Um, look, it's a terrible situation that we're in, but the lies are going to keep getting fed, fed, and fed to you because there's people that still want to eat it. It's the normalcy bias. Um, they don't want to accept the facts, so what the facts are. All right, but once the 2 to 10 inversion occurs... Um, our president's going to need to address this. He, and this is exactly how it's going to go. He's going to blame two things, China and the Fed. He will not at all blame himself and his policy of the dumbed down. Now, understand, I know a lot of you are getting offended. Oh, Greg's beating up on the president again. It's not even his policy, all right? 
The president is getting abysmal advice from an imbecile. You know who that imbecile is? Peter Navarro. Um, I don't understand what's going on. If you look, go look at what Peter Navarro is saying. He has a lot of posts out there. There's a lot of people quoting him out there. The, pe the president is parroting it. Whatever he's doing. It's too stupid. Uh, I understand. Look, I'm not an economist. I'm a, I'm a market specialist, uh, a macro market specialist to be more specific. But, um, and the president's not an economist. So he's relying on an economist to tell him what he should be doing, kind of like the Federal Reserve. The Federal Reserve is full of economists. You understand that, right? Uh, although, again, they do have a trading desk, too. So they have, some, they have a trader, some traders, or people who know how to trade in there, I suppose. You know. But uh, the fact of the matter is, our president is getting a, abysmal advice from an imbecile. Um, and he's he, this guy, Navarro, wants the president to play the game, the debt game, and unfortunately, the president doesn't know any better. All he knows is to play the debt game. So we're going to get the blame game. China, it's China's fault. Why the yield curve is inverting? Uh, it's the Federal Reserve's fault. Meanwhile, the yield curve has been inverting for years, all right, way before this whole thing with China. So just be ready for the spin so you can pick up your lovely phone and laugh into whatever network or uh, the president is on at that point. You say, you, you know, do you really expect me to believe this? You're a liar. Tell me the truth. And, I'll, and I will ab absolutely have a different perspective on you. Look, like I said in the video I did this morning, I started off by explaining to you that, you know, and I say it all the time, every moment that passes is a new moment to turn this all around. Our president, seriously, I will still, if he were to say today on national television, look at look guys and girls, look at everybody out here, we have problems. In our, in our country, things are not going as good as we thought they were. Uh, and, you know, take the blame. Say, look, I understand where we're at. I have a new perspective on it. You don't understand what would happen to me. At that moment, uh, I would back the president 100%. 100%. I would say, now is a guy who finally turned it all around. He picked the moment and he did it. But he won't. He's going to play the debt game. He's going to play the blame game. And I think he's going to look like a laughing stock around the world to a greater degree than he is already. And it's a, it's a shame. It really is. All right, so let's talk a little more here. Understanding where we are at. Stocks took a hit today. Dow down 400. All the major indices in the negative. But the real issue here is the debt market. Finally, people are starting to pay attention to it. Finally, the Confederacy of Dunces themselves, this is CNBC, Addressing the yield curve, but of course they had to parade out the the fool. Oh, okay, no, okay, okay, yo. yeah, it's okay. Really? Uh, how about the fact that the two to ten inversion has predicted every single recession, market crash, depression, and everything else you want to think about with a one hundred percent accuracy? Yeah, that's the truth. So we are uh, on the threshold, people, right now. Uh, we got to keep our eye on that thirty year too. The 30-year bleeding off like that, the 30 years bleeding to death. It really is at this particular point. And the full-spectrum inversion that we have now, I mean, this alone should be like raising alarm bells. Now, let me put another perspective on this that I've talked about before because I know a lot of people are going to freak out. I don't want you to freak out. I've explained to you over the past several weeks that I wanted you to start thinking about where, you're, where you are, your investments that only make money when stocks go up, um, and, and maybe to diversify yourself out a little bit. If you're not holding precious metals, you are way behind the curve. Um, you need to hold physical gold, more specifically physical silver. I also own platinum and palladium myself. Uh, I, have, I have a lot of assets. I own vintage instruments. I own artwork. Uh, real estate, you have to spread yourself out, okay? Um, don't be invested in any one thing. And again, uh, like I said, I believe another avenue here is cryptocurrencies. Bet against, um, bet against the dollar in any way you possibly can because the next phase here is very simple. Uh, and we heard from JP Morgan today who said, 
QE is coming, quantitative easing. Again, remember, I, I talked about this, I don't know, a week or two ago, J.P. Morgan, you get the connection there, you know, the same people that want to hire me, and I said no. Okay. Uh, yeah, they're behind the curve, too. Uh, way, way behind the curve. Big lofty bank, biggest bank on earth by assets, but you see, uh, the people there, for the most part, no, they, they can't think for themselves either, and that's a shame. Um... I guess they don't want to want to hire me anymore after this, huh? But it's the truth. Look, I told you already. I don't care what offer I might get from a Wall Street bank. I don't care who they are. Um, I won't work for a Wall Street bank. Uh, there's no. They couldn't buy me. Let's put it that way. I work for you, and I work for free. That's the truth. All right. With that said, keep your eyes on these things. Let's watch that two to ten inversion. Remember this too. Remember this. Again, this is where we've never been before, so we don't really know how long a lag time can be. But if history is a guide, all right, uh, when we get when we get this two to ten inversion, it could be any day now. If things continue the way they are, we can start counting down in a matter of months before we really feel the brunt of this hit. It's a major uh, leading indicator, and that's that's something to keep in mind too. So again. No need to panic, but you do need to think about what you, how you think you should position yourself moving forward. And remember this too. When you get on the phone with your financial advisor, they won't even know what you're talking about, honestly. Uh, they will more than likely feel threatened and get angry. This is what people do. When people tend to, uh, you know, when they're experts at something, and they are threatened because they don't know the right answer. They kind of come back at you in, 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 in a way that they try to make you feel small. All right? You're not small. Understand that. And I guarantee you, if you walk in, in the room, if you've been with me for X amount of time, and you were to converse with your financial advisor, you're 10 feet tall. And they're like about a foot tall. Understand that too. Uh, and I'm, I'm not ashamed to say that. I've kept every single one of you ahead of this market better than I think anyone else probably on the freaking planet has uh, with regard to the market, how this has played out, what would happen right after the elections. Of course, I don't get every call right. But seriously, uh, sometimes you got to give credit where credit's due. My calls, <laughs> by and large, are correct. Uh, and again, it's only because I work damn hard at it. Damn Hard. This guy loves you from the heart. Please share this video. Get it out there. Make a difference in people's lives. Let's wake some of these zombies up. See you in the morning.